Welcome to Revolution 2018, everyone! Come on! That's the spirit. I am so flattered. Thank you so much. It's my privilege to be here today, and I'm actually fulfilling a dream of mine. I knew, I knew that one day there would be 1,000 people just coming to listen to what I have to say. And they will queue, and they'll come in the rain, and we're miserable. And this dream of mine, you know, it's not from now. I started when I was a child, and I had long hair, and I played bass guitar. The photo is right there. <laughs> more hair, more skin, and then I thought, well, people will come to listen to my music. <sighs> it vanished, both the hair and the dream. But, <laughs> but seriously, guys, thank you so much for being here today, really. I know um, we have three days over here, and we have more than 1,000 people over here, and I'm really excited. To all of our customers in the crowd, thank you so much for your trust and for your partnerships. And for all of our partners, we are working with all of our partners tirelessly to creating a great ecosystem that making your life, our customers, easier and more productive. And so thanks so much for working with us. And thanks for your support in this event. And I highly recommend for all of you guys, really, have a chat with them because it's going to make your life easier. And finally, everybody else that is coming over here to see whether we are a fit and we are right for your business. And I think we are nice people overall. <laughs> But thanks so much. Okay, so let's, let's, let's get started. Um, we started last year, and we're calling it Revolution. We don't call it Evolution to the event or, or Small Tweaks or something like this, because I think that marketing needs a very big change. Marketing needs a shake. Marketing needs to get to where it used to be, right? And I'll talk about it, because we build this event around two main challenges. So last year, we started in Berlin. We have 700 people, and today, uh, joining us to this quest of a change, more than 1,000 people. That makes me proud and excited, and because we're all celebrating the same thing, right? We all have passion for marketing. More than 30 nationalities, so you guys came a long way, not on this lousy weather, uh, <laughs> but uh, it doesn't matter whether you came from Stanford or you came from Sydney. We are very determined to make this event fun, insightful, and productive, and to make sure that apart from the fun, you learn something, uh, something new. Okay, so again, we build this event around two main challenges that we see today uh, in the marketing space. And I'll start by asking a question, I'll debate, I'll reason with you guys a bit, and I'll give you a solution and explain you where you can find this, this uh, uh, information. Okay? So, Alan said you have to participate, that's the deal. So I'll start, <laughs> I'll start with question one. So we're saying we are all consumers first, right? We're consumer first and we are marketers second. Raise your hand as consumers, only, but only if the brands that you are consuming products and services from truly understand you and truly personalize your experiences. Wow. I thought there would be one hand and I'll pick on someone and say, okay, I want to learn from you. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. The world is, is changing really, 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 really fast. Um, so what's happening over here? You guys and me as consumers, I'm, I'm not the only one who think this way. If you look at the ACSI, because we're all, we're all different, we can put the ACSI on, and I don't have jokes about downloading applications, so ACSI, ACSI. ACSI stands for the American Customer Satisfaction Index, and it's pretty much the only, the only measurable index that tells us something about consumer sentiment, right? And there are brands, and there are retailers, and there are e-commerce that plan, and, and building the merchandise around how consumers like, and how consumers behave, and what do they believe in. So you see that it's crazy, but there is actually a drop insatisfaction from the previous year. And that has to do with online shopping. So you think that that's, that's it? No, because it's also extended itself to travel. Right there. Airlines, online travel, we are less happy with it? Are you kidding me? It's like, what is it, 90% of all the offerings that we have today online, right? That's what we're consuming online. We're buying stuff, we're buying travel packages. How can it be? Because I'm sure that everyone is working really hard, right? Services are 24-7, we have reviews, we can compare pricing, we have all the offers in the world, we can buy 24-7, it's like crazy. And yet we are saying we are less happy. So what, what's happening over here? The answer is very simple. It's not enough to provide the services and good prices. We want to be treated differently. We want to be understood. We want to be treated as individuals. And in consumer-first world that we are living in today, that's a new reality. So we as consumers are saying we want more. Our expectations keep on rising, Satisfaction keeps on dropping, and that's the first challenge we have over here. But to illustrate this, 
I'll be a consumer today, and I'm a very savvy consumer. So trust me that everything I'm buying, I'm researching the mm, out of it. <laughs> okay? So, and then everything that I'm wearing today, uh, coming from customers that are using our platform. Really, I didn't buy just before this event. I, I'm very proud to have great marketers over here and great brands over here. So let's me, let me walk you through my stories, all right? And it makes sense. And let's look at every story and how I'm leaving my marks on every each brand, okay? And then let's try to rationalize it. Shoes. Shoes, you see them? The shine is nice, right? I look after them. And it says that, there we go. It says that if you look after your shoes, the shoes will look after you. And so I'm investing a lot of money in shoes. And a friend of mine said, um, hello, had buy those shoes the last 10 years. Made in the UK, by the way. Okay, so all of you Brits. Um, and then um, went online, researched for an item. Loved it. And one of my trips uh, right now, right here from uh, Hifa to uh, Hong Kong, I stopped at um, Code Geiger. Are you guys here? Code Geiger? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No? Okay, so Code Geiger is a great shoe retailer, really great shoe retailer, and I love buying products over there. And I stopped in, I knew exactly which item I liked, and I picked it up. And I'm still very happy, and this was six years ago, all right? First experience. Wanna go up? Let's do it. I'll do the socks now, so. <laughs> See this? See this? Here's the thing, I'll leave it a bit like this, although it's funny. But uh, I dress a bit more on a gray scale, right? And then I'm a bit more formal. But uh, colors bring just joy to my life. And I love colors. And happy socks just does it for me. Are you guys here? Happy socks? <laughs> Thank you. Love your products. I actually bought it two years ago before you became our customer. And um, PR told me not to say it, but I will. I did it while I was, I was uh, <clears throat> in the restrooms. <laughs> <laughs> God. Don't you laugh, don't you laugh. I know all of you did it, okay? So that's that. Who doesn't like discounts? Let's see. Okay, there was the second joke. That doesn't gonna work, because I said, okay, here's this guy over there, and for all of you marketers, go talk with him. He'll pay full price, okay? Um, love discounts. 30% off, gray jeans, in Len Crawford, Hong Kong. Got an email, it says 30% sale. Woo! I ran to the, ran to the shop. <laughs> that's what I did. That's what I did. And I got them, and I walked very happy. So what happened over here? Simple trigger of sales, discount, bought those babies, went home very happy. Uh, let's continue. We'll leave the underwear there, okay? So just, just to be clear. Um, but here is the thing about fabrics, and I have the thing for fabrics. I love fabrics. I think fabrics need to do three different things. That's three? Yeah. One, they need to look good. Two, they need to feel good. And three, they need to do the job. Right? Sound funny? But, you know, how fabrics should uh, breathe, for instance, or prevent us from being smelly sometimes. And I think that Uniqlo does a fantastic job, and that's Uniqlo. And everywhere I go, every city I'm visiting, it has a Uniqlo store. I'm stopping, and I'm buying myself a product over there. So if they really want to understand me, it's about collecting all those signals and all my visitations and all the shops and unifying to my profile. And only like that, they'll know how I'm behaving with their brand, okay? Uh, Philippe K, are you guys here? <laughs> that, that, that's you guys. And uh, we actually met several weeks ago uh, in the office, and right afterwards, I think everyone can guess the rest of the story. Went online, searched the item they like. I swear to God, that's what I did. All true stories, all true stories. And I actually bought it two days afterwards in a reseller in Vienna, not even direct. Okay, so what we have over here, completely different experience. Actually, all of those experiences completely different. It's the way that I'm researching, buying, sometimes on my iPhone, and sometimes uh, online, sometimes in the shop, and sometimes in reseller. But I'm not done yet, okay? Because we talked about the British weather, and you guys had a fantastic summer, right? And I thought, I thought, I may as well. So I brought my swimsuit with me, and I thought, Oh, you should wear it today, because if you want to make a statement, that's what you should do. And it's this one, but I decided against it. It's from Oliver Brown. You guys here? Yeah. Love it. I'm a fan, really. That's, that's mine. It's not a prize I'm going to throw you guys. <laughs> that's really mine. And this is a fantastic product, and I love it, and it's tailored, and I think that money can't buy you a better swimsuit. I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. And four years ago, I spent time with my family, Winter break, indoor swimming pool. That's us. That's actually, that's actually, 
summer in London. That's us in our summer vacation in London. <laughs> no. Uh, but that's my family, and I miss them dearly, and that's my swimsuit. But I had this friend with me, and he kept on going, oh, you should buy this, you should buy the cream swimsuit. And I said, well, he's sitting over here, honestly. I'm not naming him. He knows that. Okay? And I looked down and said, well, I actually need something new. And then, while supervising my children, went online, buy my products. And uh, luckily, nobody drowned, because my wife was there, and my wife um, puts up with me since we were 14. Okay? Somehow. Can you guys delete all the jokes about my wife? I'm just making sure I'm going to get into trouble. But that's the only... She gives me crap for stuff that I'm not buying with her. It's too big, it's too small. And, and the Philippa K item is one of the only items that she really kind of gave me her blessing. So I think, well, maybe you should get one for yourself. But those are my stories. And my point, the point I want to make over here, that all of my stories and all of my instances are completely different, right? And when you come to think about your stories, they are different as well. So how are we going to go about collecting all the signals, unifying them, transforming it into information, making sure that we are actually using it to communicate with consumers? Because, hey, everybody said, I didn't see even a single hand saying that there is one brand that actually understands us. So how, how, how are we going to do that? I'm a student of marketing. I'm a student of life. Teach me if you can. Really, I'm, that's a challenge. That's the first challenge we have over here. But let me continue with this debate. Let me continue with this argument. Let's go on. And um, I heard today already stuff around the four Ps, because four Ps, right? Everybody knows what's the four Ps? Did you guys miss the class? No? So <laughs> let's put it right there. Four Ps. Four Ps teaches us and gives us tools on how do we go about personalizing the experience of our consumers and our marketing strategy and the stand for, I missed this class, I have to write it from here, uh, product price, promotion, and place. Thing is, some people say you can just trash it and you can throw it away because it's then replaced by four Cs. Want to know why? Because it's not about the product. You're not creating product and then going and looking for customers to create them. It's about asking your consumers what they want to buy and then going and creating it specifically for them. Right? What's the second one? We have price. Okay, so maybe we can think about it as cost. And what I mean by this? So you know how much money we are all investing in acquiring first-time customer? And we all know that the holy grail, the holy grail is third purchase and onwards when it's coming to retail. That's how we're making money. Profit margin just gets bigger. So what about the cost and all the lifetime value of a customer that is being lost to a competing product? What about that? Okay. Promotion? Kidding me? Segments? So if I'm going to hear today segments, like it, we're going to have serious conversation. No, but honestly, it's not about putting segments together and pushing stuff out of the door and one too many, because we all said we want to be treated differently as individuals, right? OK, what would the last one we have, place. I don't think that, and I think it goes without saying, nobody's open the shop and say, I'm open from 10 to 10. Come and visit me. Just doesn't work anymore. It's all about be everywhere and anywhere. Okay, so our world just becoming more complex and even the, the theories and the strategies are irrelevant anymore. So let's, boom, let's continue with this. Another click, I have a virtual click, shoom. Okay, I'll continue to make it a bit more complex. What about generational gaps and how are you going about that? What's your plan? Beyond all the signals that we're all living on the communication with the brands, how are you going about that? What do I mean by that? OK, so on one side of the spectrum, because it says that we have about four or five different generations, we have those guys, baby boomers, not me, <laughs> not me. And for them, it's all about influence, whether it's family or friends or, or celebrities, and sometimes they'll be a bit more averse when it's coming to technology. And here I am preaching you, and I just told you that most of the products I bought were recommended to me. So, so much about influence. Um, but on a serious note, then on the other side, completely, we have millennials. And you know how millennials go. It's all about immediate gratification. It's about mobile. And it seems that all the life is spent online and in, in social networks. So they are completely different. And what about, what about the next generation? Those guys, uh, Generation Z, it just gets too complex, right? They're going to be your customers the day after tomorrow. And for them, it's not about social networks, because they're not there. It's not cool. I'm an uncool dad. That's how my children call me. It's, it's shocking, really. It's all about gamification and mobile, and then going to be our customers tomorrow. Our complexity just gets almost intolerable. So how, what, what's your plan? And it's very simple. I think it, 
I don't think, I know, we've gone beyond the human capacity to personalize the experience that we have with our consumers. And consumers' expectation keeps on rising. So last year we talked about AI, and we just showed you what we can do, and we kind of be nice to one another. But if you wonder if it's time to you to get on this bandwagon, it is time. It is time, because you said it, and the index said, the ASSI, that we just want more, right? And that's the reality. And we made a great progress. Naturally, it's, when it's coming to marketing, it's new technologies that are being used for the last three years. So there's a lot of push that will come from our side. And because we're a community, I expect the same push, right? And it's all about learning from one another over here. So um, we also went and asked 2,000 consumers right now in the UK, what do they think about uh, personalization and relevancy? And 40% said, 40% said, that they are very unlikely to buy, again, from brands that will not personalize the experience for them. And on the flip side, 60% said that they expect all the offers they're receiving for brands to be completely personalized. Okay, so that's how we designed the first challenge. So the first challenge, consumer expectation keeps on rising. Satisfaction goes down. We are living in a very complicated world, but we have to collect a lot of signals in real time, unify, transform to information, and then using all those micro-communications and it's about time that actually machines will help us, because we as humans, that, that's it. We want, we want more, and marketers really need to be very successful and should be marketers and not deal with execution, which is the next challenge, okay? So let's shift gears, and let's uh, go and talk about the second, uh, second challenge, and you will see us today talking about AI, and tomorrow we have also sessions about AI, and we want to be, we want to hear you, so please do not be shy. So moving on, moving on, moving on. We said we are consumer first and we are marketers second. Okay, so stepping back to your marketer's shoes. Okay, if you took it off, put it back on. <laughs> um, and then marketers first, CMOs, I'll address you as well. So raise your hand as marketers. Raise your hand only, but only if you have enough time, as much time as you want to, to understand your consumers, to strategize, to plan, and to be creative. Why? Okay. We must be knowing what we're talking about. Uh, <laughs> so here is, here is the second challenge. And it seems that marketing is so off track. I'm a marketer, and I studied marketing, and I, I was actually a customer for Marcy's, and I, I chose marketing because I love understanding consumers, and I love planning, and I love strategizing, and then I like to see how the results, actually, of my work are shaping up. And already 10 years ago, I, I already felt that there's a lot of execution. But it became even more complex, right? So we have so many technologies that we have to deal with today, and there's every year, every month almost, a new acronym, right? And then there's so many vendors, and we have to put everything together, and all this data to unify it and work with brands and implement, and how much time we're just spending on doing it and creating campaigns and segments and pushing things out of the door. <gasps> Sometimes we're even coming up for air. We've gone a long way since marketing was marketing. And marketing is very much focused on execution, and that's our passion, not for execution. Our passion is for changing, and that's why I told you we're calling it revolution and not evolution, or small tweaks at Marcy's event. It's about revolution, and marketing needs to be wait, for the same reason we chose it. Strategy, planning, creative, understanding consumers. That's our passion, okay? So how do we do that? For you CMOs in the room over here, okay? Raise your hand only, but only. If you have a very clear way to connect all your targets and all your objectives from, that you're receiving from your CEOs and your companies all the way down to execution. Raise your hand. Anyone? Okay. No one. Uh, and CMOs today, by the way, um, and I'll tell you my story. I'm a CEO. I think I'm special. That's what my wife tells me. But <laughs> in this regard, deleted, right? In this regard, as a CEO, I'm no different than anybody else, than your CEO and your companies. And I tell you what I want for marketing. And specifically for my CMO, where's Alan? Pressure's on. Uh, <laughs> I want more revenues, more revenues. And marketers are now today, those days, in charge on revenues. I want them faster and I want to be very productive, right? So with all the 15 different platforms that you have, go and manage it and bring it to me fast. And the result, the result for both ends, CMOs have the shortest tenure among all C-suites because pressure is on and we just want more. And in this regard, I told you, I'm not, I'm not different. 
And marketers, there's a great research over here, also in the UK. We want to be relevant very much for you. 58% of marketers, 58% across industries, across verticals, said they are unsatisfied with their role. The highest percentage among all functions, across, across all industries. And when they were asked why, they said it's because, well, everything is changing so fast, and we have so many technologies. And only 28% said that actually companies are moving fast enough and giving them the tools to meet those rising expectations of the consumers and from so the CMO that just want faster results. So a lot of frustrations over there. And then we have a clip for you on show you what frustrations like. I'm getting more crazy than this guy, so let's let's bring him on. Okay? And we took the sound, this was just patch. Alright? I'll not compete with him. That's frustration. And when I saw it, I laughed hard. And you guys like, oh, yeah, I know, he's, uh, he's frustrated. Um, but look, it's not about telling you what doesn't work, because I think that you all know it, right? I want to tell you about how we're going about it. And we started this journey on, on changing the marketer role and making sure that marketing is about marketing and marketing is not about technology implementation, technology integration. It's not, it's not about that. Six years ago, we started with the first uh, product called Smart Insight. And, we said, well, how do we take the guesswork away? Right, so if we're already addressing collection of data and unifying it, then how do we take all this guesswork away? And how do we transform data into information? How do we do that? And for many years, it was a very good product and a leading product. But uh, unfortunately, same for you guys and same for us. Technology is moving very, very fast. And consumer wants even more. And so 12 months ago, we started a new process completely. And we ask ourselves all those tough questions. If we're saying that consumers' experience should be personalized, what about the marketer's experience? Why nobody's talking about that? So we all say, oh, we are B2C marketers, or we are digital marketers. What does it mean? What does it really mean? Because we have different industries. Okay? And also within the industry, we have different needs. What do I mean by this? So just let's think about the travel industry. So we have airlines, and we have individual hotels, and we have hotel chains, and we have online travel services, and then we have the online tra travel services that are affiliation. Every, each one of those sub-segments within the industry have completely different goals, different use cases, different KPIs, different ways they're executing about stuff. And further, there is more complexity, because every organization has different goals, and every organization is in a different journey. So how do, we, how do we do that? How do we avoid providing the industry an empty software? What do I mean by this empty software? Right? You're getting a tool, and you're getting this tool manual, manual, and you get support and documentation, and you have to pour in the data and the creative and all those confirmations and create the programs, everything to put it together, just to see after a couple of weeks you know, if your hypothesis actually works or not. So you need to Split test it. How do, we, how do we do that? So how do we make sure that you guys actually are marketers and not technology integrators? How do we do that? How do we connect the objectives of the CMO all the way down to execution? Faster. They want faster revenues. Consumers, if we will not do our job properly to our consumers, they'll go away. And they'll go to the first brand that will do a better job than us. And that's the reality. So how do we do that? And 12 months ago, we started um, a very long and tedious process, and we are rebuilding the way that we are structured in the organization. And I'm very proud, excited, and you said I'm speaking fast, that's part of the excitement, uh, to tell you that uh, today we are going to announce completely new products. It's, a, it's not a product even, it's a philosophy. It's a vision. It's a product vision. We build the way that we are building our products, developing it, ground up. We build our go-to-market completely. Documentation, marketing, the way that we are looking at the challenge. Because we as marketers need to focus on marketing, and that's the reality of it. So today at 4 o'clock, we have a full-blown presentation. We're going to show you everything we're doing. But before that, I want to keep you, I want to leave you with three different things, right? Just to simplify it. Okay, remember that. Different industries. Everyone with their, their industry. We are launching today three new industries: e-commerce, retail, and airlines. And then every quarter, every three months, we're going to release new industries. So my commitment to all of you guys, that all of you guys will have your specific industries. Okay, so we researched hundreds of customers, hundreds of customers, and we said, what are your goals? What are you trying to achieve in a specific industry, in a specific sub-industry? 
And then we looked at all the use cases, all the possible use cases. We don't need to invent stuff. You don't need to invent stuff, right? We're working in a very similar way within an industry. And then we mapped all those use cases, and we built it in. Objectives are in. Use case are in. And then we took this automation center, you know, this canvas that you need to connect things together and spend a lot of time, and, and we pre-built it. What do I mean by this? Your segments, your data, your creative, ready to go. So three different steps that we are from a revolution, and I think it's, it's not a transformation, it's not a tweak, it's a revolution. So let's see it. Click one. Goals. Your goals. Your goals, not mine. And then you can go and you can tweak them and you can change them to fit your organization and your stage. It's that exciting. Choose a goal. Then the second thing is going to appear for you, in front of you, your use cases, tactics. What do I do to achieve those goals in your industry? Your use cases. Want to tweak them? Tweak them. You want to add more? Add more. They're going to roll up all the way to your objective. And then when we're clicking it, Automation center appears on all this canvas, except that it's all pre-populated. Your data, your segment, your creative, ready to go. That's a revolution. Okay, so please join us today. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, a lot of hard work in front of us, a lot, and, and honestly, we want your feedback. That's why we're here. We said we're a community, right? So. Um, so to summarize it, challenge number one, personalization. Consumers, we want more, right? How do we go about it? We have AI, we have great technologies, we build sessions today, we build sessions tomorrow. Second challenge, we said, how do we connect the objective of the CMO all the way down to execution? How do we make sure that marketers do not execute and actually marketing? And then we have this new announcement that we are making today, okay? And we will share it with you later on. And that's what we have for you. And I ask you to engage and I ask you to teach and learn from everybody around you, because there is some great experience that sits right now here in the crowd. And uh, with that, let's make a revolution, not less. Let's make a revolution, otherwise, you know. And let's have fun with that. All right? So cheers. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you again.